In this podcast, I want to talk to you candidly about the subject of religion and spirituality. Now, the way I think most people go about developing their religious and spiritual beliefs is that they make it part of their identity. They say, I am an atheist, or I am a Roman Catholic, or I am Jewish, or I am Buddhist, and so on. I want to challenge that approach to religion and present an alternative view, a different way to think about religion and spirituality, rather than making it part of your identity, to treat it as a, as a piece of software running in your mind. So for example, on your personal computer, you might have a word processor installed, you might have a spreadsheet installed, you might have some computer games installed, and so on. You have a bunch of different pieces of software installed on your computer. But you don't necessarily think of those pieces of software as your computer's identity. You wouldn't say, my computer is a word processor, my computer is a copy of such and such game, my computer is a spreadsheet. Rather, you would say that my computer has the capability to perform word processing, it can perform as a spreadsheet, it can perform as an entertainment machine because of the type of software that you have installed on it. It's not that the software is the identity of the machine. The machine has its own identity separate from the software. However, obviously, that software gives the machine various capabilities. It controls its functions at certain times. And for the time that you're using those particular pieces of software, you may indeed identify your computer as a machine that is a word processor, or a machine that is a spreadsheet, or a machine that is an entertainment machine. But it's really not those things. It's really much more than that. Similarly, you can apply this concept to the idea of religion. See, the way I see religion is not as something that you would make a part of your identity. In fact, if you ask me what religion I am, I would probably just give you a blank stare because the question doesn't really have any meaning to me. I see religion, or spirit, religious or spiritual beliefs, as software. Software that runs within the mainframe of your consciousness. So for example, I could load up the software of an atheist, and I could take on the belief system of an atheist and think like an atheist. I can also load up the software of a Catholic. I was raised Catholic for all of my childhood. And I can load that up again and remember what it was like to be Catholic and go to Mass and so forth and so on. I can also load up the software of Buddhism. I can load up the software of various other belief systems. The ones, at least the ones that I've experienced. Similarly, I can go out and learn about other belief systems and I can effectively install new software to the degree that I actually accept them, to the degree that I will install them in my consciousness and accept them as true. But I don't go so far anymore as to make those things into my identity. I used to do that. That's how I grew up. I grew up Catholic and I, I thought, I am Catholic. And then later, later on, in my late teens, I dropped that and became an atheist. And then I said to myself, I am an atheist. Eventually I became an agnostic and I said, I am an agnostic. And then I went on to practice other belief systems. And part of me realized that that doesn't make sense to say that I am those things per se, because if I was those things, how would I constantly, why would I constantly be changing? Why would I be shifting from one to the other? If I was Catholic, how could I ever be anything but Catholic? If I was an atheist, how could I ever be anything but an atheist? So I stopped thinking of religious and spiritual beliefs as a part of my identity, even temporarily, even an identity that I might move through and move out of again. Instead, I saw it as, this is really software that is running in my mind. This is a belief system that I am installing, and if I want to, I can subsequently uninstall it. Well, how is this possible? Your identity is not the same as your beliefs. See, I see that our identity is really our consciousness. And any thoughts that occur within that consciousness cannot really be part of your identity. They're not really the real you, necessarily. They're simply thoughts. They're simply software. You can start thinking of your computer as the dominant software you run. And if you started running the same software every day, day in and day out, and did nothing else but use that software, you would begin to identify the machine with that particular software, forgetting for a moment that the machine was capable of much more. Another thing I found interesting is that on a computer, you can run different types of software. 
You can run a word processor, you can run a spreadsheet, you can run a computer game, and yet your computer does not have a problem being schizophrenic. It does not have a problem with its identity. But yet can human beings do that? Can you be a Buddhist and be a Catholic and be an atheist at the same time? Well, supposedly not, right? How could you believe in God and not believe in God at the same time? But yet I found that it is possible to do this if you stop making those beliefs into your identity. Just as a computer can have various types of software installed and not have a conflict over, well, am I a word processor? Am I a spreadsheet? Am I an entertainment machine? What am I? And not have to force out anything that disagreed with this identity, you can do the same thing. As I started thinking about this model, I started saying, well, is it possible to have these disparate beliefs in my consciousness, in my mind, and to accept them all, even though paradoxically, it seems they disagree with each other. Could I have within myself the belief system of Catholicism, the belief system of atheism, the belief system of Buddhism, various New Age belief systems, and so on, and not need for one to be dominant over the others, not need for one to be right and the others to be wrong. And part of the reason I thought about this, that, that this model might have some possibilities to it, is that I heard, a, uh, I heard a long time ago that one of the traits of genius is the ability to hold conflicting thoughts in your mind without one having to dominate the other. And I thought that's kind of an interesting, interesting idea to apply to religion because supposedly many different religious ideas conflict. I mean, if you just take something like the belief in a higher power and the belief that there isn't a higher power, those obviously conflict. What would it be like to actually harbor both beliefs and to accept both beliefs simultaneously and not, not have to force one to be dominant? In a, in a way, it's almost like pushing two magnets together, two opposing magnets and forcing them together or smashing subatomic particles and seeing what happens. And when I started trying to do this, something fascinating actually happened. It's been said that if you take a man and a woman that hate each other and you put them together on a de desert island all alone that eventually they'll fall in love, that somehow the human heart will find a way to work out their differences. Now, I don't know if that's true in an objective sense, but I found a similar mechanism at work with my belief systems, with my beliefs that I held in my consciousness. And I found that if I held two conflicting beliefs or more together in my consciousness long enough, eventually they found a way to work out their differences and they reached a new level of integration. In a way, they began synergizing. And again, the model that that seemed to work here for me was the idea of software running on a computer. You can install 10 or 20 or 100 or 1,000 different programs on your computer, and they can all perform well. And it can increase the capabilities of the machine dramatically. But the key is that at any one time, you're only using one of those functions. And yet you don't need to have all of those programs follow the same mindset. For example, you don't have to have your computer be dedicated to entertainment. You don't have to have to be dedicated to word processing. It can be a multifunction machine. And similarly, I believe you can be a multifunction human. See, I found that with each different belief system I tried, there were strengths and weaknesses. When I was an atheist, I found that there were certain beliefs that served me really well, such as the idea of taking absolute personal responsibility for my life. Not trusting in a higher power meant that I was responsible for everything that happened to me. So I had the belief, if it's to be, it's up to me. That gave me a huge sense of responsibility. However, with other belief systems, I found, such as a more Buddhist belief system, I found that I could tap into my intuition much better. And intuition became a huge asset of that, of that belief system, where I would turn inward, say, through meditation, and I could sort of contact what I might think of as my higher self and be able to get answers to problems that I really couldn't answer logically. I could go on about all these different belief systems, but I, I think it's, it should be fairly obvious to you that every time you have a belief about something, it's going to make you more attuned to certain opportunities and less attuned to others. So if you're wearing a lens, it helps you tune your senses towards certain frequencies that the lens will pick up, pick up and amplify. But meanwhile, you're simultaneously tuning out something else. It's very much like computer software in the sense that if you're running a computer game, it's tuned into entertaining you. And if you're running a spreadsheet, it's tuned into doing mathematical calculations. A spreadsheet is not entertaining, and a computer game is not going to be able to help you with your taxes. 
So I found almost that this idea of spirituality for me became trying to absorb many different belief systems and noticing that different beliefs were empowering or disempowering in different situations. So I started sometimes behaving like an atheist when I found that atheism was a model that would be, that would produce the best results for me, where personal responsibility was very important. For example, in terms of my health, I eat a healthy diet, I exercise every day. I take all of that responsibility on myself. In other areas of my life though, such as my relationships, I tend to follow a very intuitive approach, almost like trying to connect with another person's spirit. And in that sense, I don't use the belief of atheism. And, and furthermore, there are situations where I'll use a combination of them, such as in business. There are some business situations where I will adopt almost a godless approach, and there's others where, other situations where I will use a highly spiritual approach. Because I found that each belief system is effective in its own way in certain situations. See, ultimately, I found that the ability to allow multiple belief systems to coexist simultaneously within my consciousness without requiring one to be dominant over the other is very practical. You can use this type of thing to enhance your relationships. You can use it to improve your health. You can use it in business. I make money from a variety of streams of income and each source of income I have was created from a different philosophical mindset. Some of my income comes from sources that were created via, you know, via hard logic, but some of it's manifested through the power of intention. And I've done other business deals that have come about from following my intuition. See, since I adopted this philosophy, it's had real practical results for me. I've been having a really easy time generating income for one thing, because I know that there are multiple ways to generate income. There are multiple philosophies that will lead to the creation of wealth. So why use, some, why use just one? Why not use many different, many different ones? Think about, think about running a business using only one type of software. That would be a little bit silly, right? Why not use 10 or 20 or 100 different programs? Anything to enhance your business that you can. So why not do the same thing with your life? Why use only one type of software to run your life? Why not use many different ones? Human beings have this capacity to be multidimensional in a sense. We're not single-celled organisms. And for a lot of my life, I struggled with this idea that I needed to adopt a single philosophy or religion as the one true belief. But as long as I made that assumption, I was never fully satisfied. Every time I would shift my beliefs, I found that I gained some new strengths and at the same time lost others. For example, when I, when I shifted, say, from an atheist system to maybe a new agey type of si belief system, the accuracy of my intuition became much greater. But I also felt that I lost some of my rationality and reasoning ability. I became a little less reason, reasonable and more emotionally intuitive. But what I really like about the multidimensional approach is that it makes it possible to harness the strengths of multiple philosophies or multiple belief systems at the same time. So you can use the tools inside any of these boxes without putting yourself inside the box too. Another benefit is that it makes the practice of living extremely rich. Like in, in a given week, I might do several different styles of meditation. I might go work out at the gym or go running. I might do some self-analysis in my journal, read some pages from the Bible, put out some new intentions, revise my goals, listen to a podcast about a shamanistic belief system, maybe even read an article on Hinduism. All those things, even though they may come from different philosophical mindsets, they enhance my life tremendously. I actually found, have found this to be a very empowering and enjoyable way to live. Now, this is just sort of a taste of what it's like to adopt a multidimensional belief system. But the real benefits are far beyond your ability to solve problems. Because when you stop identifying yourself with a single piece of mental software, then your human capabilities will expand tremendously. You'll enjoy the benefit of running a full complement of different types of programs, just like a computer would. For example, you'll be able to better manage your emotions. I can't even remember what depression feels like. And no, I'm not on any medications or drugs or anything like that. But why? Why? Why do I feel so good? It's because I have so many different pathways into a positive emotional state. Another thing is that your career can become this blend of realistic income generation, doing productive work, having some purpose-driven contribution, and most of all, fun, lots of fun. And you can relate to other people in multidimensional terms too. So your relationships 
can become deeper and more meaningful. And the number of people you'll be able to form friendships with will increase dramatically. When I, when I was Catholic, I remember that I only had Catholic friends. And that's actually very common, but it's also very limiting. But since then, I've learned to make friends regardless of what belief system they are. Because I don't identify myself as any particular belief system, then I'm not forced to treat theirs as something alien to me. See, many people run their whole lives running only one piece of software, one piece of philosophical software, maybe with a few minor upgrades along the way. Most likely, it's the one they were taught as, as, as a child. And if that's your choice, if that's your conscious choice, fine, wonderful. But if you're curious about what else is out there, don't be afraid to take a look around. There's a lot of cool software in the library of consciousness, and it's, it's just waiting for you to install it, and most of it's free. Now, if you happen to hold the belief that your particular religion or philosophy or belief system is the one true one, and that everyone else is simply wrong, try to recognize that a mindset like that is actually a trap. It's one of the ways you can recognize that you are, in fact, confining your consciousness into a very limited box. And you don't have to. You don't have to do that. You're always free to step outside that box without losing what the box contains. The big problem with being in a box is that you've, if you've been in the same one your whole life, you probably think that the box is reality itself. You probably can't even imagine what lies outside that box anymore. For example, if you have the belief that any sort of psychic experience is impossible, then you aren't likely at all to experience psychic stuff. It's outside your box. And anyone who does report experiences like that, well, they're going to be crazy or mistaken or gullible or something along those lines. That's how you'll frame it to yourself. But if you were to step outside that box, then suddenly you would open yourself to psychic phenomena that you'd never experienced before. For example, you might experience astral projection. It scared the heck out of me the first time, first few times I did it, but it's there. It's real. In fact, my wife was the one who introduced me to it. But if you're not open to that type of thing, you will likely never experience it. So you have to realize that your beliefs are not merely perceptive. They're also creative. Think of the software on your computer. You probably have an easier time thinking of the software on your computer as being creative rather than perceptive. So you don't realize that the computer software that you're using is perceiving you. It's receiving your inputs, right? It's receiving it through the keyboard and the mouse and so on. You probably don't even think about that a lot of the time. But your software is sitting there perceiving you. However, it's obviously designed not just to perceive you, but also to be a tool of creation. So you can use your word processor to create an article or create a book or create an essay. You can use, your, you can use a computer game to create an entertainment experience. You can use programming software to, comp co to create other programs that you can run. You can use an HTML editor to create a web page. So it's a creative experience. But your beliefs are very similar in that sense. Your beliefs about spirituality or religion are also creative in the sense that whatever philosophy you adopt becomes a tool for creation. It becomes a tool for creating your life. And if you only have one tool, then your outlet for creating an interesting life is extremely limited. It's like a computer, again, with only one piece of software installed. There's not much you're going to be able to do with it. You're going to be limited to a very narrow channel of creation. However, if you install all these other different programs, now suddenly you have a much broader creative outlet. See, the people who are really trapped inside a rigid philosophical framework, well, first of all, they're very unlikely to ever listen to a podcast like this. And if they did, they'd have turned it off long before they even reached this point, I'm sure. So if you've actually listened this far then chances are you're already open-minded enough to be ready to begin seeing the edges of your own box. What are its limitations? Think of a computer that only has one piece of software installed. You might be able to identify the edges of its limitations by identifying what the hardware is capable of, technically capable of, that the software is unable to do because it hasn't been programmed to do it. Similarly, your hardware, your physical emotional, mental, spiritual, hardware, however you want to think about it, has capabilities that you are not tapping because the mental software you have installed is unable to tap those capabilities. Psychic phenomena is just one, at, one example. So let's say you want to examine the edges of your belief system. You want to find out what are the capabilities of your hardware that your software is not tapping. So here's what to do if you want to take that step. 
you may not want to take that step, but if you do, here's what to do. Focus on this intention right now. I intend to be shown the edges of my limiting beliefs as well as what lies beyond them. Say it out loud. I intend to be shown the edges of my limiting beliefs as well as what lies beyond them. I intend to be shown the edges of my limiting beliefs as well as what lies beyond them. And simply release that thought as an intention into the universe and hold the intention that it will manifest in some way. Then just wait and see what happens. Now I'll tell you, I actually did this as I was thinking about what I wanted to do in this podcast and I was thinking of this intention. I thought to myself, why don't I do that? So I did that. I, I put out that intention. And this was actually several weeks ago that I started thinking about this type of podcast. And I put out that intention. I intend to be shown the edges of my limiting beliefs as well as what lies beyond them. And I thought, yeah, okay, probably not much is going to happen because I'm such an open-minded guy, right? Well, I was kind of blown away by what happened. First of all, within an hour, I started seeing a series of strange synchronicities. It's a bit complicated, but I'll say that it led me to some very unique experiences that were outside anything I'd ever encountered before. Something called the Crystal and Indigo Children. I'm not going to get into that. what that is. You can look it up online if you want to. But I was kind of blown away by all of this. And one thing sort of led to another that led to this sort of chain of events that got me off onto reading and researching on this whole new path. This, this whole new pathway that I'd never really explored before. And it really was outside my previous experience. So that was sort of a neat thing for me that, you know, it still works. It's like you're always in some kind of box and you just can keep pushing the edges, pushing the edges. It's just like we're doing with our computer technology. We're always constantly creating new software to push back the edges. If our software had all the capabilities of our hardware already, there would be no new software created. We would be done. But of course, that's not the case. New software is constantly being created. Similarly, I think we should be creating new software for our minds consci consciously. And the way to do that is to question our beliefs and to keep pushing the edges of them back, to keep broadening our horizons. So the real idea of this multidimensional approach to religion or to spiritual beliefs or philosophy is that it makes you a more capable human being. It expands your horizons. It makes life a heck of a lot more enjoyable than having a single belief system. It's just like using a computer with one piece of software versus using a computer with a hundred or a thousand pieces of software. It's a much richer experience. So I encourage you to start thinking about this, that maybe your philosophical belief system, your religious belief system, your spiritual belief system does not have to be your identity as a conscious being. That it may in fact merely be a piece of software and that by making it into your identity, you're like a computer running only one piece of software. Now, if that's how you choose to live, great, wonderful. But let it be a choice that you actually make. And until next time, live consciously.